Okay, I, hi. <laughs> I just stumbled on a story that is a non-story. It's like a two-sentence story, but I found it interesting. This is that Don Cheadle um, was confused by his Emmy nomination. Now, I have, I have not seen The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, but um, I don't really think Don Cheadle's confused. Um, and it just made me think immediately, this is why award shows are nonsense. Now, I did a reaction to the Emmy nominations. I don't even remember if he was one of them. Because they do the... I don't even know which ones they pick, why they choose the categories they choose to telecast. Because the ones I always wanted were never put on the, you know, the reading of the nominees. I always had to look down the sheet and I haven't looked at the whole sheet yet because there's probably other stupid stuff that doesn't make sense. But again, I wouldn't know. I really didn't watch TV this year. Now, this is Don Cheetah's confusion over his nomination, which apparently was over an extremely short cameo in The Winter Soldier. Why was, I have not seen it. It could have been the best three minutes of acting in the history of mankind. Don Cheadle is a very good actor. I've said before that I enjoyed the movie Miles Ahead that he not, not only starred in, but he directed. So he's pretty good at that too. Um, his politics is annoying because he just talks about it all the time. But as far as acting goes and stuff like that, you know, I got no problem with Don Cheeto being, um, I always want to say Dom Cheeto. Why? Anyway, <laughs> um, I don't begrudge him a nomination I would assume that he you know acts just as good as everybody else in it unless he just totally sucks one day but generally speaking he knows what he's doing so um I just I may have gotten tea on me um <laughs> um he knows what it is and we know what it is especially with the tv awards now wokeness and a lot of us don't like wokeness and we feel like we get it um beaten over us beaten our heads beat beaten over our heads a million times over by entertainment and it's getting worse and worse every day it started with the award shows okay because the academies the television academy the especially the academy of motion picture arts and sciences at some point started to vote their politics or vote for I don't even want to call it agenda they started voting for movies that you watch and you're like really that's the best movie of the year and it wasn't they were voting for it because it either sent a message it had a, a, a what do you call it it had a um it made them feel good to vote for that film for best picture for reasons that have nothing to do with the quality of the filmmaking, the acting and stuff like that. We can go back to very recent, um, winners, you know, um, so a lot of Academy members are political animals themselves. So they will vote based on something that speaks to their own personal views of life and such. So you will get a movie like, I don't know, pick a movie in the last 10 years because most of the time it's not, oh wow, this great and artistic endeavor. It's saying something. It's saying something they want to say. It's about a marginalized group or it's about, uh, you know, when the press actually worked to expose a situation or it's because of something that's political something that's not necessarily just a good movie like say you had a movie like the french connection or something those kind of movies wouldn't just because they're good filmmaking and interesting stuff they wouldn't win now but if there's a movie like they said oh how would how did he say it in get shorty danny devito says he was going to play the crippled gay guy who climbed mount everest you know what i mean it's like that sort of thing and I've also heard that sickness always wins if you're an actor, <laughs> if you're in an acting category, but um, this is why it's nonsense. Now, in the case of Don Cheadle, 
again, I haven't seen it. I, if he's confused by the nomination, he shouldn't be. I am going to call this the Peter Dinklage syndrome that these awarding bodies have now. Did we watch Game of Thrones? We all watched Game of Thrones. Was Peter Dinklage awesome in Game of Thrones? Peter Dinklage was awesome in Game of Thrones. That show had how many seasons? Eight seasons? Right? Because the eight, eighth was the bad one. Anyway, the last one was bad one. But, historically speaking, Peter Dinklage was the guy to get the award from that whole entire cast. Now, in the beginning, you say, wow, that, that guy's awesome. You know, he's so cool. The guy who plays Tyrion, you know, fine, whatever. But then it's him again. And it's him again. And it's fine, except there were points in time where I was, I myself, as somebody who followed these war shows, was rooting for someone else. I mean, to me, you look at the, and this is not taking anything away from Peter Dinklage. You take the whole show. You take every character's arc. You ask me, who did the best acting in Game of Thrones? I say to you, Alfie Allen. Alfie Allen played Theon Greyjoy, also known as Reek. I am not even sure he was ever nominated. Okay, because when you have these awarding bodies, they have so many categories, they have so many slots in the categories the Emmys is iffy with their numbers and stuff but they tend to with these tv shows what gets nominated is what's seen what's obvious and then there's the default that all these awarding bodies go into and this is why Don Cheadle was nominated probably and this is why Peter Dinklage was the guy who was always nominated from Game of Thrones when there were other people in that cast who should have shown up. Um, how do you say his name? Ewan Rowan? You know, Ramsey Bolton? Um, one of the best, could be one of the best, the best villain on TV ever. I want to say one of the best because I'm off the top of my head. I'm not, nobody else is popping up. It probably was somebody else. If you consider J.I. Ewing a villain, is he a villain? You know what I mean? They're, you know, there are villains on TV, but Ramsey Bolton was one of the greats. Um, and Jack Leeson, okay? So, um, but again, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, and um, Olena. I'm forgetting her name. Anyway, but there were other people in the cast. The thing is, <sighs> there are some of us who love TV and movies and or one of the two and we love to sit there and see great we love to watch a movie and be wowed by it we love to be amazed and see something original and something so well done and that's why I always followed these award shows and stuff because I rooted for I would go to the movies and see as many movies as I could during the year that I was interested in and then when it came down to award season, you know, starting with like the Gotham Awards and stuff like that in the fall, you would start wanting your people that you had favorites. Oh, I thought this guy was the best in that and this one and that and she did great and all this stuff. You start racking up who you want to see pop up getting nominations. So I would root for people the same way somebody else was at the same time of the year that somebody else was rooting for their favorite NFL team, which I watched the Super Bowl too. But you understand, to me, the Oscars was the movie Super Bowl. I wanted my people to make it to the end. I would root for them. So when I first paid attention, the first year I paid attention, it must have been like 1996, 1997, when it was doing the usual suspects was um, in the running. And um, I do believe it won Best Screenplay. And the movies I like, some do tend to win Best Screenplay, if anything. They don't generally win Best Picture. But I had wanted Benicio Del Toro to get nominated. He wasn't, but Kevin Spacey was nominated in that category, supporting actor, and won. Um, I think he won. Did he win for that? Well, he was nominated anyway, because he won twice, and I know he won for um, Rolo Tomasi. Um, so, anyways, the point is, I was very interested at the time, and, and for a long time I thought that they did, the people who voted did watch the movies and choose what they thought was best, whether they had bad taste or not, and then create 
these categories and, you know, and then vote on the people who were nominated and then somebody gets to win and go down in history and have their big Oscar moment. You know, if you think of Julia Roberts, when she won for Aaron Brockovich and the beautiful dress and stuff like that, that's like the moment, you know, she's going to be a crunchy old lady someday, but that's her moment in time. I mean, she had many moments, but that's going to be the moment that defines her just like now if we watch, you know, old footage of Audrey Hepburn or somebody getting their Oscar, you know what I mean? That's going to be the moment you remember for if you're in, if you make movies, if you make TV or whatever. So, what has happened over the years is you have the people now voting for their politics, they're voting for the movies that, um, for whatever reason, they feel important for, for doing that. For me, the first symbol of this is ridiculous was um, Slumdog Millionaire. That movie was horrible. It was poverty porn. But I felt like all the rich hoity-toity people in Hollywood felt good about themselves if they voted for the movie that had the poor people in it. The extremely, extremely, extremely poor people in it. Because that movie, it was, it was depressing, depressing, depressing. And then, J-Ho! You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, I, I, right then and there, I was like, these people are crazy. So they vote for reasons that have nothing to do with the quality of the work, of the performance, of the film, of the anything, okay? So when people got more, everything became more political, people became more woke, people became more this, people became more that. You have people voting for their politics. You have people voting for people they agree with politically. And then you have the time-honored tradition that's gone way back of people voting for the name they know. So they get a ballot. There are plenty of people who oh, I'm sure do this. They get a ballot. You saw me do the nominees, right? You saw how I saw none of it. Suppose somebody gave me a ballot and now said vote. I'd have no idea. A lot of people in these academies, like myself, for whatever, they're too busy with their own lives. They don't even like TV. They just made money off of it 10 years ago. They're in these academies. And they look at the ballot, and they don't know anybody. Don Cheadle, I know him. Check. I haven't watched Game of Thrones since season one, but that Peter Dinklage was so awesome. Check. Oh, what is her name? Anyway, I loved her on The Avengers. We're the same age. I'm going to vote for Dame, 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 Dame. Diana Rigg. Check. They don't even know. They didn't watch. The, 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 the Game of Thrones could have been on season six. They wouldn't remember who someone like Alfie Allen even is. But they remember that they liked Peter Dinklage and Dame Diana Rigg from season one. Or maybe even from their work before. So they check who they know. People are looking at this ballot. I don't know who else was available in these categories. Everybody knows who Don Cheadle is. As I just said to you, for the most part, he does a good job acting. I, I have had no complaints on one of his acting jobs. They may agree or not agree with his politics, but they say somebody has a general good feeling about Don Cheadle. They look at the list. They're like, check doesn't mean they even would ever they, some of these people would probably never go near a marvel tv show they probably didn't stream it at all but they know who don Cheadle is they like don Cheadle, so he gets nominated they liked him in something else they like who he is as a person he gets nominated just like i said peter dinklage was the only one who kept getting nominated i'm not saying at any point he shouldn't have got nominated his accent was never right he, instead of saying the word can't, it sounded like a very bad word every time he said it throughout that whole TV show because his pretend English accent made the word can't sound like a very naughty word. But, <sighs> you understand what I'm saying? They don't actually watch the programming. They Some people do. There are always those people, like myself, like other people, who 
will sit there and say, okay, these are all the things I watch. I, this is my favorite and that's my favorite. But that's also why you will see over the last decade or more, you will see one show Not, not necessarily sweep the awards, but sweep the nominations. Because there's three or four shows that everybody watched. And the shows were of good quality. So, everybody votes for everybody on that show. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, there's other shows where some people watched, some people didn't. Only a handful of people watched. But all the people who watched the show thought that one person did such a great job and they all nominate, want them to be nominated, but there's not enough of those people who saw it. And then there's other people who watched it, don't even remember people's names, and just don't take it that seriously. So you end up with a situation where people vote for who they know, whether they like them or not, whether they watch the show or not. So if Don Cheadle is confused by his nomination... He probably isn't confused. He probably understands that he's well-known and well-liked. And that they saw his name on the list. A lot of people saw his name on the list and just checked it by default. And like I said, that happens with plenty of actors. You see the same shows come back year after year, season after season. Any of these shows, the Golden Globes, the SAG Awards, whatever. Year after year after year, the show could take. I mean, Game of Thrones, everybody knows that the last season of Game of Thrones stuck, but it won. It won because of what went before. Okay? Because people are not, especially with television, people are not voting for that year. They're not voting for the performances in that year. They're not voting for, they're voting for, they look down at it, well, it's probably on the screen now. They look at the, the ballot or they look at their options and they choose what's familiar to them, or if they really did watch it, they choose what they like. But in terms of people watching as much as possible of that year's eligible nominees and truly choosing what they think the best was across many different television shows, it's highly unlikely. As if people have their favorite show and they just tick off everybody on the show. They may be ticking off the name of the show next to an actor's name and not even know which actor that is you know oh i loved that show tick 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 you know so that's why especially with something like the emmys when there's so many television programs and so many actors and so many costume designers and so many writers that you get the same show getting nominated in all these categories you know what i mean so uh yeah. This is why, in the end, the award shows have become nonsense. Years ago, to me, it seemed like there was some validity to it. Maybe I was just naive. Maybe I didn't know better at the time. But in recent years, you know, especially last year's Oscars or the year before, you really see that they're just voting for who they think they should vote for or what, who makes them feel better as a person. Oh, I'm not a racist. I'm going to vote for Parasite. Oh, I don't want anybody to beat up Asians. I'm going to vote for Parasite. I'm going to vote for this Asian American. I'm going to vote for this Asian filmmaker, these Korean filmmakers, you know, because I feel bad. So I'm going to send a message because I want there to be representation for these people. And so saying, I really thought that was the best movie of the year. I didn't like Parasite. I thought it was okay, but I thought it was extremely overrated. I thought the wife was, was a caricature. Nobody's that dumb to <laughs> um, hire that many people just because somebody told you to whatever um and it devolved into a tarantino ending meanwhile remember no quentin tarantino movie has won best picture okay but as i said they do what they want because of their reasons and their reasons really have so little to do with actually watching the project and liking it it has to do with who they who they know what they like, what they hear about. And the same thing went along. I remember years ago with Brokeback Mountain. I was rooting for Brokeback Mountain. There was a push among people in Hollywood who did not want the gay cowboy movie win to vote for Crash instead. So instead of the award, the, the, the votes being splayed and Brokeback still winning, Crash, which was a horrible film, but it let other people who were stuck in the 60s in the civil rights movement, um, that civil rights movement, decide that they wanted to vote for that because that meant more. 
instead of the gay rights movement at the time, which it didn't. But Brokeback Mountain was a much better film. So was Munich. Crash shouldn't have been nominated. It was trash. But people vote for their politics. People vote for what makes them feel good about themselves. And then if none of that comes into play, by default, and this is something that's gone on forever, they vote for who they know. They vote for who they liked in something else. Oh, I liked him in that other movie. I'm going to vote for him for Cap, you know, the Winter Soldier. Remember how good he was in, um, what? What was he good in? What was that one with the war place? He was nominated for that too. But anyway, you know what I mean? They, they'll they just remember him. Something Rwanda. Anyways, I can't remember the title. But yeah, you know what I mean. They vote for people because they know who they are. They vote for them because they liked them as something else before. They vote for the person. They don't even know their name. They don't know which character they were. But next to their name, it had the TV show that they liked. And this is why year after year, you hear the same shows. As long as the show is still on, it gets nominated. The same people get nominated. The same writers, directors, actors uh, on shows. And there are shows that nobody, most people didn't see because most people didn't buy that one streaming or subscribe to that one streaming platform. And then nobody watches the award shows and they go, why? I showed you. I, I, I mean, I'm a normal person. A lot of people during the pandemic, they did buy all these streaming platforms. I did not. I didn't have the money to, but I wouldn't have anyway. But somebody, you, in order to really watch these, you have to have... Netflix, um, Amazon, Prime, um, Hulu, now Apple Plus, um, Disney Plus. You would have to have, you have to subscribe to all these things to watch all these TV shows. You'd have to have a ridiculous amount of time and to watch them all. And nobody could possibly watch them all. You just don't have enough eyeballs and enough hours in the day. But you'd have to spend a great deal of your day just watching TV programming or, or streaming ser series in order to accurately pick the best, or not even accurately, somewhere close to pick the best. This is why it's ridiculous. But also, it's a bunch of bupkis. And it has been both the, award, the movie awards and the TV awards have been a bunch of bupkis for a long time because they're voting and nominating for these other reasons that have little to do with the actual quality and craftsmanship of a film or TV series. There's my piece.